Welcome to the Storm Chaser Q Show. I'm meteorologist Quincy Vagel, and this is part two of dangers that storm chasers face while storm chasing or while driving. I had so much feedback on this topic that I'm breaking it into a two-part video, at least two parts. This one's going to be focused on weather-related issues, and then the ever-controversial area of issues that storm chasers face from other storm chasers, whether it be reckless driving or dangerous habits that other chasers are exhibiting on the roadways or off the roadways for that matter. I'll start with weather related issues. This will be pretty quick. I'm not going to talk about, for example, a tornado being an obvious hazard or a hailstorm where hail is a hazard, kind of more things that are a little bit more broad or maybe not as commonly thought about. So hydroplaning is a major issue and if you're storm chasing, chances are at some point you'll drive through rain. And then for hydroplaning, you could have vehicles that are just driving way too fast for the road conditions around you, someone trying to pass you or someone driving next to you, if they hydroplane, like they could swerve into you or could cause a multi-vehicle pileup. It could be a major issue there. And then hydroplaning too could be driving at what seems like a fast speed or a safe speed, might be too fast. And then all of a sudden you hit a storm and it just starts pouring or you hit a stretch of roadway that goes from dry to wet really quickly. That could cause hydroplaning. And then people making U-turns. I mentioned this, mentioned this in the previous video but a, a big reason why people might make a U-turn is, let's say you're driving and all of a sudden there's a hailstorm or there is a storm that's approaching, you make a sudden U-turn to get out of the way, that's fine and dandy unless there's traffic coming in the other direction or if there's traffic coming from the direction that you were going and then all of a sudden you have someone doing U-turn, you could have vehicles from both directions and then that could just be a major issue there. Then Matt Coker had an example of wind blowing over a semi-truck in front of them and it wasn't from the storm necessarily it was just a strong low level jet so there was just strong winds and semi flips over and that could cause a major accident right there and then this one was mentioned adrenaline fatigue syndrome interesting but i would like to thank reed timmer for that quote so now the chaser related issue that this is a little bit controversial a lot of things here and I have a lot of a lot of first-hand experience with this but I'll start with just the issues that have been mentioned the most light bars very controversial I think most storm chasers would agree that excessive lights or light bars are not necessary and it could actually be illegal in some states but the main point is that light bars especially at night you have almost these strobe lights flashing on storm chaser vehicles that could be a distraction it could blind your visibility and could cause issues on the roadways there and then vehicles that have red and blue lights, but they're not law enforcement, or they're not police, or they're not an emergency vehicle. And there's some videos and pictures of me storm chasing in Dodge City. And I had many people ask me, is that a police car next to you? No, it was a storm chaser with red and blue lights, but I won't get into the debate about that. Something that happens all the time, and I've seen this many times, storm chasers just standing in the road, middle of the roadway. And a lot of times they're parked, their car is halfway off the road, but they're half still in the travel lane. They open the door, the door is almost to the double yellow lines, and they're just standing there with a camera. It would be so easy to walk onto the grass or to close the door and get in front of the car, but for some reason this happens all the time. And this was one of the most number one mentioned issue from storm chasers. That overlaps to, somebody had mentioned, just staring at a storm while not parked safely, same thing. And then Mary mentioned a line of storm chasers just looking at a storm, not pulled off the roadway, and then blocking traffic. You could, that's pretty self-explanatory why that's an issue. Now, storm chase tour groups. Most of the time, these tour groups are responsible. They park off the road, they go onto a dirt road, they pull over, but what happens constantly is these tour groups, they park on one side of the road, and then you just have the tour guide or the tour group attendees or the tour group participants or clients or whatever you want to call them just running through the road almost like a bad game of frogger because you'll have fast moving traffic in both directions and then these people are just they could be standing in the road in awe of the storm or just running across the road not looking both ways that happens a lot i've had some close calls because of that this was mentioned several times people driving while using a camera outside the window. So just envision this, somebody is driving, they have one hand out the window with a camera, are they really focused on the roadway? And actually there was one of my 
first tornado chases, there was a storm chaser that was doing that exact thing and drove off the road to a ditch because they were filming a storm while driving. It's one thing if you're driving and then your passenger is doing that. And that kind of leads into the next topic, people hanging out of windows or doors while driving. So it's one thing if you're on a dirt road going 15, 20 miles per hour and your passenger has a camera faced out the window. But if you're the one driving doing that, or if you're driving at fast speeds, hanging out windows or doors, that could be dangerous for a lot of, lot of reasons. Passing. This is something that's a very broad category. It was mentioned quite a bit, and it breaks into a lot of subcategories, but passing is just, just the, the main term here. So people passing around corners, which means someone's passing vehicles around a corner and you can't see who's coming or you can't see who's, if someone's passing from the other direction, that's a major issue. Passing and no passing zones. And this, it's different if you're on a dirt road and there's nobody to see for miles and there's a slow farm vehicle that you're passing. But if you're just gonna pass by four, five, six, or more cars at once in a no passing zone, that's a major issue. And then yes, um, multiple passing multiple vehicles unsafely. It's almost always unsafe to pass more than one vehicle at once. Unfortunately, storm chasers do this and I've actually seen Doppler vehicles, which is a, a mobile radar on a van or on a truck passing people around a corner. But again, that's a whole other topic. Excessive speeding. So there's speeding's an issue, whether you're storm chasing or you're just driving to the supermarket, that's always an issue, but excessive speeding. So storm chasers who brag about going 90, 100 or more miles per hour while storm chasing. If you need to go that fast, either you shouldn't be driving or you shouldn't be storm chasing because you're clearly not in the right area. And if you have to drive that fast to get to a storm, you're probably too late. Then Kevin mentioned he had an escape route while storm chasing that was blocked by a vehicle that was parked sideways. And they ended up getting hit by 80 mile per hour winds and debris because it was a vehicle blocking the roadway. And they assumed it was a storm chaser. Can't confirm that, but it sounds like it was because in my experience, if there's a major storm coming or a tornado, average Joe who lives there is gonna be wanting to get out of there as soon as possible. Parking on the top of a hill was mentioned a lot. And I hadn't really thought about this, but that's a good point because if you're coming up a hill, you have limited sight distance and if someone's parked halfway on the road surface and you're coming up a hill, vehicles might not see you in the other direction. So that could be a major issue. And then Amos said, our photographer and me filling our Jeep with cigarette smoke back in the day. So cigarette smoke could definitely be an issue that could cause danger while storm chasing. So some great feedback. I think I want to talk about in the future video about the storm chase tour group that drove directly into a tornado and had their vehicle flip. And it's been in the news a lot lately. There was just a video posted to YouTube where one of the people on the tour actually filmed the vehicle flipping. And the reason this is hit, hits home to me because I was just two blocks away from this happened. I was, I passed by this van about two minutes before it happened. So I think I might dive into that, but that'll be an upcoming video. Otherwise, as always, if you have feedback, or questions or topics you want me to discuss, best way is to either reach me on social media at StormChaserQ, or you can go to quincyvagal.com slash ask to ask a question, or email me at StormChaserQ at gmail.com. But until ne next time, I will talk to you soon.